Okay, I'm going to go ahead and fertilize my watermelon plants. Over here, I got some pellet limestone. This is about $5 for a 40 pound bag. I go ahead and take a little bit like this, and this is what I do. I want to put some right over here where the emitter comes out. I want to put some right over there where the emitter comes out because there's two. I'm going to put some on that side. And I'm going to put some right there. I use that whole thing. So really, it's I don't put it, I do not put it right on the vine itself right there. I put it around it. Now, I have 10, 10, 10. And normally, I'll do the limestone one weekend, which today is Saturday. And the following weekend, I'll do 10, 10, 10. Then the following weekend, I'll do limestone. Following weekend, 10, 10, 10. And I'll, I'll do that if I see them on the ground, if it's raining and it disappears. If it's not raining, you have to water it in. Or if you don't water it in, you'll still see the pellets on top. Well, if you see a bunch of pellets, don't put a bunch more on there because you'll just pile it up. You want it to soak in. So for today, I'm going to put a little bit. around the plant so right here this watermelon plant which is a crimson sweep it's growing nicely all the leaves are doing well it's giving off a lot of blossoms and a lot of watermelons they're small some of them are larger so they're starting they need the calcium they need the fertilizer they need the water so I'm treating them properly now besides this through my irrigation back at my well pump where I have my fertilizer injector I go ahead and I use Comfrey Bakken 14 and Mexican sunflower that I went ahead and fermented into compost tea and I go ahead and put four cups in a five gallon bucket fill it with water and when I turn on my irrigation to water, they're going ahead and get fertilized. Twice a week I do that. So twice a week they get in liquid fertilizer, plus they got the granules. That's enough. The growers, the commercial growers, send liquid fertilizer to their watermelons every single day so they grow quicker and get to market quicker i don't need to grow mine quicker or go to market this is just for my own use and to give to friends and family and so forth um and neighbors so i just want to let them grow be juicy be flavorful not split not get blossom and rot so this is what i do so let me get going. <clears throat> okay, so once again... I'm going to fertilize this watermelon plant right here. I'm going to put down some limestone under that emitter. And when you're in here, you want to miss all stepping on the vines. I'm going to put it on this one. Put some up there. And put some over here by my foot. That's a happy plant. Now I'm going to take some 10, 10, 10. Put some over there over here over there <clears throat> oh. 
Okay, doing it for the camera makes it a little awkward. So when I do the rest, I'm not going to have the camera on because it's hard to position it and get in here. When I'm just doing it without the camera, I don't have to worry about positioning. So once again, I did limestone and I did 10, 10, 10. Plus it's getting the liquid fertilizer through my drip and it's getting watered properly. It's going to be a happy watermelon plant. Okay, so I showed you how I irrigate, how I go ahead and put down the fertilizer, what I fertilize with. This is my watermelon crop here. It also goes down to the other way. There's 200 feet of watermelon crop that's going to be coming in. And right now, I have a lot of blossoms and I have some watermelons coming in. So it's important to water with six gallons of water a day, to fertilize with 10, 10, 10, time released, and to go ahead and give it calcium. So I put on the limestone pellets, it's time released. When it rains, it'll wash into the ground. So they're gonna be happy with fertilizer and they're going to be happy with water now twice a week they're going to go ahead and get liquid compost through my irrigation system as well so let's go ahead and see what they're looking like so far Okay, so you can kind of see where I went in there. That's why I don't want to do it on the video. Without the video, I could step, come in the other way, don't have to worry about position, so I'm not going to do the rest on video. So, as we walk around, you'll notice there's a lot of blossoms. I got watermelons coming in. A lot of them you can't see because they're hidden from the leaves. But as I walk around, you'll be able to see there's some Good watermelons coming in. There's another watermelon over there. And there's probably more hidden that I can't see. But let's go ahead and walk around over here and see what we find. There's another watermelon. There's a smaller one coming in. There's a lot of blossoms on there. There's another watermelon. A lot of blossoms. There's a watermelon hiding way in there. Here's one right here next to the blossoms. Okay, over here, small watermelon, small watermelon. A lot of blossoms. No, the watermelon. Watermelon here, watermelon there. If you can see it. Here's a watermelon. Another watermelon right there. And then my other watermelon vines go all the way down. Like I say, 200 feet of it. Let's walk this way. There's a watermelon right there. A lot of blossoms. Those blossoms, some of them are going to turn into watermelons. There's another watermelon. There's another watermelon. Oh, here's another watermelon. As you can see, they're around.
Okay, so right in here, here's one hiding. Okay, so you get the point. Um, my vines are taken off from my fall crop. I got a lot of blossoms and I have watermelons coming in. Very important. Water, six gallons a day. Very important. Liquid fertilizer. I use uh, Comfrey Bakken 14 and Mexican Sunflower. I do that twice a week through my fertilizer injector. I have videos on that online about the fertilizer injector. You can see how it's done. I recommend everybody get one, either for your well pump or your spigot on your house. I go ahead and fertilize with limestone pellets. It's time released. You won't get blossom end rot. And I use 101010 10, 10 granules time released. I go ahead and alternate every other week if it's raining and it's disappearing. If it's just piling up and not soaking in, you can water by hand or just wait for it to water in. But one thing you don't want to do is deplete the nutrients and the vitamins from your watermelons. They'll get blossom end rot and they won't grow to be really good juicy tasting on the inside. Usually when you cut them open, they'll be whitish and it won't be fully ripe. Plus, if you don't water six gallons a day, you'll go ahead and when it rains real hard, they'll, they'll be starving, they'll suck up a lot of water at once and they'll burst. But if you do everything that I just said right over here, you're not gonna get blossom and rot. You're not going to get any watermelons bursting. And when you slice it over, when they're ripe, it's going to be fully red, yellow, or pink, or orange, whatever color watermelon you have. And it's going to be juicy all the way to the rind. And you can scoop out and eat the rind because that would even be done. So, I hope you learned something. I hope it works for you. If you use this method... Let me know. If you use a different method, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help you out. Until next time. Okay. So I went ahead and took care of my watermelon plants. I went ahead and fertilized them for time release now. I'm gonna go ahead and give them some compost tea. So, I got my bucket in here. I got a scooper. Okay, gonna put my bucket right under where I'm gonna fill it up with the spigot. I'm gonna mix my compost tea. Now, I'm gonna get some scoops. That's two cups. Okay. So right there is four cups of compost tea. Let me turn on my well pump. Okay, so I went ahead and turned on my well pump. I got the compost tea in here. Now I'm going to turn on my spigot. And I'm going to fill this bucket up right here. Rinse my hand off. Okay, now I'm going to take my filter and my hose and I'm going to stick it in the compost tea right there. 
And now I'm going to turn on my valve system so it sucks up through the tube and goes out to the garden. This is how that's done. Okay, so as you can see, my compost tea right here is filled up. I've got this on in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn on my valve. So let me see if I can do this here. I have to go ahead and turn this valve right here. And that makes the water go through. I have to shoot the water's going through that way now. I have to shut this off. Okay. Okay, so I shut this off so the water don't go that way. Now the water's coming through this way and it's going out that way. There's a pressure gauge here and a pressure gauge here. This pressure gauge right here has to be 25% less than this pressure gauge to create a vacuum or a suction. Now right here, I could shut this off right here or I could turn it on like that. You'll see the bubbles and you'll see this going up and down. That controls how much goes in when you water them. So right now it's coming from this bucket through the hose, up through here. You can kind of see when I turn this, I shut it off, it goes to the bottom. When I turn it on, you see how I can control with how far that goes up. If you turn it all the way on, a lot goes through and that five gallon bucket will be done in a few minutes. If you lower this like that, it'll take about 45 minutes or a half an hour to 45 minutes for that whole bucket to go through. Just like that. And it'll probably go quicker if I clean out uh, the filter over there. But this is good right here. So I'm going to go ahead and let that go. So just to recap, my pressure over here. This needs to be 100%. And this one here, this valve reduces this pressure 25%. When you do that, it creates a vacuum which takes the liquid compost tea through the hose, sucks it up through the regulator over here, depending on how fast you want to go, goes through the fertilizer injector, and then it goes out to your garden okay so once that's complete right now I'm fertilizing my garden through the fertilizer injector it's all there is to it it's sending fertilizer to every little drip head emitter and it's water it's watering right now my whole garden it's watering my grapevines and it's watering all of my uh, watermelons so I do this twice a week so they get good fertilization. However, I still got the granules. Remember, I got the 10, 10, 10, and I have the calcium pellets, which is limestone pellets. It's basically calcium. That's gonna keep your watermelons very healthy. And it's gonna keep your grapevines healthy as well. And it's going to keep your garden healthy as well. Now the garden, I've been using AgroThrive on it. This is multi-zones. So I can send fertilizer to the watermelons. I can send fertilizer to the grapevine. And I can send fertilizer to my garden. Soon I'll be sending fertilizer to all my banana plants, to the comfrey, to Mexican sunflower and my entire permaculture landscape that I have. This winter, I'm gonna get out there and do a lot of digging and lay a lot of pipe. So anyway, this concludes what I do to keep my watermelons growing and growing healthy so they don't get blossom and rot and they don't split when it rains. I hope this helps somebody out there.
And if it does, please let me know. I'd appreciate it. Until next time.